welcome to our podcast of the Hollywood Music Workshop. And I'm happy you're with us. How Good morning, are you? Hello. It's wonderful to be here. Great. So we, we are going to talk about uh, your course, Composers Conducting Immersion for this summer. So I have a few questions for you. So like the first one would be, um, tell us a bit more about the conducting course and like how many days will the course be? Yes, the Composers Conducting Immersion course uh, will take place from July 8th to July 11th. So it's a four day intensive workshop. Um, the composers conduct live musicians daily. It's structured and paced in a very uh, systematic way. So those with the conducting experience as well as those with no conducting experience are able to be integrated into the course. So at the end of the course on the fourth day, they'll be conducting a chamber ensemble. Wow, that sounds great. So they will be working with musicians like all four days. All, all four days, yeah. We have um, class instruction in the morning where we look at the scores, we have exercises, we work together. I demonstrate techniques. We go through a whole range of, of, of things. It's very, very lively. It's very quick, fast paced. And the students from last summer, from the feedback that I got, they really enjoyed it. So we go over everything thoroughly in the first in the morning. And then in the afternoon, we get in front of the musicians and we conduct and it's it's all videotaped. Uh, and so the composers have have a record of what they've done. Uh, and that goes systematic day to day and it builds until the final day where we conduct in the morning, musicians in the morning, and then we conduct the ensemble in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So it seems like in the morning, it's more about a technique, about, about practicing, about knowing how to move, and then in, af in the afternoon to connect it with the musicians, right? Yes, that's absolutely right. And uh, we learn everything about how to mark your score, um, how to prepare for a rehearsal, how to prepare for a recording session, how to work with click tracks and punches and streamers, how to speak to an orchestra, um, what's involved with the technique, the breath and the ictus and the rebound, all, all the techniques necessary. We'll go over fermatas and cutoffs and ritardandi and chalarandos. Um, all the fundamental things that you need to be on the podium, how to address the orchestra, um, even how to say good morning to an orchestra and how to speak their language. What's, what is the language that an orchestra speaks? Because they do, they do speak a language of breath and motion and this nonverbal language of, bo of, of the body signals, how, how, how to convey musical content and musical intention through your breath and your hands and as a, con as a conductor on the podium. So we, we take the composers through all those steps so they can go onto the concert stage and conduct their own compositions or go into a recording session fully prepared to be musical and to have clarity and to have conviction and to really enjoy what they're doing. Wow, that sounds fantastic. Like a, a lot of topics are going to be covered in, in these four days. Um, so... Why do you think it's important for a composer to know how to conduct? Well, composers are their best, are, are their own best musical ambassadors for their piece, right? They've gone through the sweat and tears of composing that work, and they are the best representative of their pieces. So for them to get in front of an orchestra and to conduct, or musicians and conduct, they will experience their music in a different way to be in front of the composers in front of the orchestra i understand many composers want to be in the sound booth and that's fine but but to even have one experience of getting in front of musicians to feel their energy to get their feedback to to immerse yourself in the physical experience of conducting is valuable because it really changes the way that composers will compose, the way they mark their scores, right? How they see the scores, how they listen to the orchestra, that changes immediately 
when you're on the podium and you have that experience, I think that's invaluable uh, for composers to, and, and also for them to, to, to appreciate what it takes to get in front of an orchestra and to conduct. And it just is a layering of sort of appreciation and experience that, that informs how they compose and how they, and how they mark their scores for the musicians, how they mark the parts, what information they may put in. That comes from having stood in front of, of musicians. Absolutely. That's also what I, I remember from last year and uh, when the class was over and the people gave their feedback, like uh, also without being asked for a feedback, they were just uh, so outgoing. And I also felt that was uh, the most important experience for them. What happens when I uh, have this exchange with the musicians? Because usually as a composer, you're not used to that, right? Right. Right, it's that live, energetic, human connection to musicians that, it, it, I mean, it's it was almost overwhelming for some of them. I could almost see them move, some of them move to tears because you're not experiencing your music in the booth behind a glass and you're experiencing it through your ears and your, and your head intellectually. You're experiencing your music uh, physically, through the sound waves, because sound is energy, and you're experiencing the energy through your whole body as you breathe with the orchestra. And it really is an, a multi-sensory experience. And um, yes, some of them were, like I said, almost moved to tears. They were so, it was such a profound experience for them. And, and that, if a composer can experience that, like I said, it will change the way they think of composing for the orchestra. It's a, it's, it almost goes into their cells on a subtle level, that energy, that takeaway from being with live musicians. Yeah, absolutely. I remember that. And even as somebody who is just sitting in the room, I I could feel it's a it's it's a totally different experience and it expanded into the whole room. Yes. So and and ultimately, it will make the composers, you know, better musicians, mm. right? They'll understand what what orchestra musicians need in their in the parts, what they need, what what words and descriptions they they need to see, what sort of markings they need to see in order for the music to come off the page and and, and to be translated into into to sound waves. Yeah. Right. So uh, last year, the course was three days. And now uh, this time, we extended it to four days. Could you elaborate on that a bit? Yes, it was. There was such a great response from last summer's course that we decided to expand it into four uh, days so we can even go into deeper detail. Uh, so we have more time to go into and in, into specifics about things. Um, we had, I, I, I was very ambitious last summer and I wanted to c cover a lot of content and a lot of material and we had to keep moving quite quickly. And although we'll move quickly this summer, we have an extra day to delve into those details, to firm everything up, to go over all of the pieces again before the composers step in front of the musicians. So it's, 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 it's like a bonus chance. It's a wonderful chance to develop the conducting course and to delve deeper and to give the composers that extra day of experiencing the conducting. Yes. I, I also remember the question was like, if they could bring their own piece, will, will there be a possibility to? Yes, sorry to interrupt. Yes, I'm going to encourage them to bring their own pieces. Uh, whatever that may be, if it's a for a full orchestra, if it's for a, you know even even for a duet or a small chamber piece, to bring their scores, we will look at those. If they have MP3s, that's also great to be able to hear that. We'll look at the scores and we'll talk about it. I'll, I'll say, okay, if you gave me this piece and I'm in a recording session, and I sometimes, most of the time in recording sessions, conductors have to sight read on the spot, and that's not a problem because we're used to that. But if but if if I had five minutes with you in the sound booth before I'm going to go out and record and you gave me this piece, 
I would have the following questions for you. And I usually go down and I say, okay, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by this? Do you want to new to on this note? Is the, is the phrase going to this measure or is the phrase going to the third beat or is it going to the fourth beat? Do you want to have more crescendo here or less crescendo? And I'd have a million questions to ask. And so through the eyes of a conductor, I would say, all right, if, if you're going to put this piece, you know, in front of somebody to conduct, these are the questions that you need to think about, you know? And so they may turn around and say, oh, I never really realized. Yeah, I mean, the phrase does go to here and I don't indicate it because the phrase could, the phrase, the, the high point of the phrase could go to the third beat. It could, could go to the fourth beat. It could actually go to the downbeat of the next measure. And I really should indicate, you know, more specifically how I musically want that. So we're going to go over uh, their pieces and, and, and look at how they notate things and see if we can discover from, from talking with each other, how, how we could maybe improve that. And then how they as a conductor, then, then now they're taking the conductor's role. Okay, if they were gonna conduct this piece, what would they do? How would they do it? Even if it wasn't to click, if they were going to do it on the concert stage, what sort of um, challenges may they face? Are there ensemble difficulties? Are, is there a better way to notate this that's easier to read? Is there a more simpler way to notate this rhythmically? Because sometimes things are notated in a too complicated way. Is there a way to simplify this? Is the description for this piece, could it be could it be more specific for musicians? You know, there's all these things. And so we will look over their scores and they'll also be able to take have a takeaway as composers with their own pieces. And that's what the four day course uh, affords an extra day to do those types of things. Hmm. That sounds really great. There's so many details are covered. And uh, I have the impression that even if somebody says, well, I don't necessarily need the conducting or I'd rather sit in the booth, but, the, but this experience will give him a totally different background when his piece is recorded. Uh, there's so it, it opens the eyes and the ears to so many more details and can make it sound better. Yes, um, absolutely. And, and and as they as composers and orchestrators sit down and and work on a cue or work on a piece, I guarantee you that they will think differently. They'll hear in their mind differently because they had a chance to experience how musicians view the score, how they see the parts. Oh, they need a breath here. They need a tenuto here. They need more dynamic markings. They need more crescendos. They need more specific things because otherwise they'll just sort of play. You know, they like, are we supposed to be mezzo forte or do you mean forte? And like, tell us exactly how you want us to play this. And so they'll have a chance, even if they determine they want to go back into the sound booth, they'll will have had that really transformational experience that will help them in how they notate and orchestrate and approach the contouring, the shaping, the shading, the color, the texture of their orchestrations. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like the physical experience just opens up a totally different approach. And yes. Yeah, and how you feel and see your own music, you know? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So um, we talked before about like uh, conducting an orchestra, um, like also on stage, or if you conduct an orchestra at a recording studios, there, there must be some differences too. So um, what would be differences in, in conducting? Well, in a recording session, you're recording a click. And so composers and conductors need to learn how to work with click track technology, um, how to run a very tight rehearsal schedule. Um, and, and so that's, that, that's one situation. And uh, recording sessions usually have a different timing. Like in the States, they're three hours and you have a 10 minute break each hour. They've gone, it's a very tight schedule. If you're recording on the, if you're uh, rehearsing on the concert stage, it's a two and a half hour rehearsal with a 20 minute break. So even the timing is different when you're on the concert stage and you're rehearsing. And you, you're, you're 
usually on the concert stage, unless it's live to picture, conducted without a click. So the whole the whole rhythm of a rehearsal on the concert stage is different. So how do you organize it? How do you rehearse? When do you stop? When do you don't stop? Without click, it's a very different thing. And so you need to have a plan, a rehearsal plan of what you're going to rehearse. Uh, when are you going to stop? How do you make corrections? It's very, di it's very, very different uh, than a recording session. So we we talk about that in great detail. Um, so the composers are equipped with the skills to go either into the recording session uh, and conduct, or if they get a chance to do their piece on a concert stage, they'll they'll know what to do. They'll know how to organize a rehearsal. They'll know how, how do you work with uh, orchestra representatives like in the States? How do you work with a, with a contractor? How do you work with the union? When do you take a break? How strict are they with those things? And, and who do you, who's your contact within the orchestra? Who's your contact within the recording studio? All, all, the, all the practicalities of arriving at a, at a session or arriving to a rehearsal on a concert stage. What, what are the differences and how, and how to negotiate that and how to be prepared is, is what we talk about. Fantastic. So like um, in the beginning, you said uh, composers can take the course when they have uh, some experience with conducting, but also if they don't have experience with conducting. So why? Uh, it, it sounds pretty advanced, but uh, can you say something to somebody who has absolutely no experience in, in conducting? How would that work for you? Yes, I, I ask each uh, participant who enrolls in the course to fill out a questionnaire. Uh, there's a lot of questions. Um, have you ever conducted before? Have you ever studied conducting before? Have you ever stood in front of musicians? How, how many musicians? Have you ever gone to a recording session? Have you ever recorded your music? And, 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 and it's okay if you say, I've never done any of this. I just want to learn how to conduct. And so uh, this course is designed for people who have never stood in front of an orchestra or musicians, uh, and also designed for the person who has had some experience or has actually had quite a bit of experience because the fundamentals of conducting, the breath, the movement, the ictus, the rebound, the pendulum, all these things are on a continuum that you continually learn, you continually develop, you can continually polish, you continually hone these skills. As, as, a, as a pianist or as a singer or as a violinist, you never just learn a technique and say, I've learned it and now I know how to play the violin. You continually practice. You continually go back to the fundamentals. You play things slowly. You play through the Bach. You play through your etudes, the things that you did when you, when you began your study. You continually do that through the length of your career, no matter at which level you are. And it's the same with conducting. Just because you know how to conduct doesn't mean that you can't learn from going back to fundamental things and reviewing. Because every time you go back, you learn something new. You learn it in a new way. If I look at a Beethoven for a uh, second symphony, which I've done so many times, every single time I go back to it, I, I never say, well, I know it. I've conducted it 50 times. I go back and I learn something new and I have a new insight and I have a new idea about the tempo, about the phrasing. It should be a little bit faster. No, it should a little bit a little slower. I think it's too heavy the way I used to do it. I want it to be more spirited and a little bit lighter. So it's the same thing with conducting. Uh, so students who have done this course before will come back and encounter some of the same concepts, but they will learn in a different way. Uh, composers who have never done the course will be, be immersed in the course and learn things alongside of the other students uh, who have taken the course. Those who are more advanced will come into the course and maybe they have never studied conducting in the way that I teach it. So they will add to their layers of experience that they currently have. So there's a chance for everyone uh, somebody who doesn't even know how to give a downbeat to an orchestra. How, how, how do I even start a piece? They will benefit as, as much as a student who has is repeating the course and as much as a student who's coming in with quite a bit of experience or a lot of experience, they'll still benefit because, like I said, if you're a singer or a pianist or a violinist, you never abandon the roots of 
of, of your foundation. You always go back and you pick your violin up in the morning and you go through the basic scales and you feel it and you do some Bach and to reinforce your understanding of, 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 of the art of playing. It's the same with conducting. So I welcome into the course people who have never conducted, those uh, who are repeating the course and coming back. I welcome you back as well, and I'm excited to see you. And I welcome people who have uh, medium to, to advanced uh, conducting experience because I guarantee that you also learn perhaps in a new way about conducting and add to your layers. Maybe you've conducted on the concert stage, but have, haven't done much recording. So then you can also learn about the recording or perhaps you've been mostly record, doing conducting in recording studios and you want to learn about conducting in the concert stage. So there, there's something for everyone. So I encourage all of you who are considering um, enrolling in this course to, to seriously take a look at the program and listen to what we've talked about because I, I, I'm looking forward to another wonderful summer in Baden at the Hollywood Music Workshop this summer to a four-day course. <laughs> That's great. I'm really looking forward to it too because I enjoyed it the last year so much. And, um, and yes, I also like the idea that pe people communicate with you before the course starts and you, you know something about them and you you know where they start and possibly where they want to go with all that. And uh, yeah, that, um, that will be probably my last question for today. So it, uh, if you have all these topics and, and, and all these ambitions, like after this overview, how, how many students uh, can your course have or will it have? Yeah, the course can only accommodate eight students because we wanted to make it very intimate and give really um, hands-on individual instruction. During the course of a, of a morning of teaching, I may have more advanced students doing certain exercises together. I may have some of the students who are just starting out do more um, things together. And so we want to be able to, I want to be able to work really intensely sometimes one-on-one -on -one and in small groups with eight students. And also having the maximum of eight students ensures that everyone gets a significant amount of time with the live musicians. So this is, uh, it's pretty much the, you know, eight, eight is the hard and fast rule, no more than eight to ensure that everyone gets gets what they they deserve and what they've paid for from the course. If we have less than eight, if we have seven or if we have six, then it's even more incredible for the students who are, who are there because they even get more time. But eight is the limit. So it ensures a very intimate, individualized, customized uh, teaching and learning experience over four days. Yeah, that's right. I also remember that uh, participants also, um, let us say, uh, work together and mm -hmm. it gave, gave support to each other and, and very positive support. Uh, the yeah. ones who knew more or the ones who knew less? Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that because it, it is a non-competitive environment. I am learning from the students and they are learning from me because nobody can know anything, know everything. So I tell them we support each other, we make mistakes in front of each other, we're honest, we're vulnerable, and and, and it's a it's a safe, supportive environment because then you feel free to experience experiment, to do something new, to do something that maybe doesn't work, and then you try it again. But it, it's it's a very uh, collegial, lovely atmosphere. And I really cultivate that from the very day one, that we all get to know each other, we introduce each other uh, from the first five minutes that we're a team and we're here to learn. And I am learning from them as much as they're learning from me. Absolutely, yes. That That's so important because I think especially in our culture, it is so important that, that you can permit yourself not to be perfect, that you can make a mistake. You, yeah, you learn from that. You try it again. You get feedback from, from you, but also from the other participants, which is no problem at all because you always learn. Yes, right? and they learn from each other if, they, if they're open to that. 
they uh, they can learn and, and and also we give feedback. We talk about, okay, so this student just did this. Tell me some of your thoughts. And it's always done in the most supportive supportive way. It's I thought it was wonderful and I thought it was musical and then it could be maybe it could use a little bit more rhythm. Okay, so let's talk about that. And it's always done in the context of of it's it's non-critical, it's non-judgmental, and it's non-competitive because the, the world is too competitive. We our world is so competitive and so harsh that uh you know it, it's that is exhausting practically. So we don't need this in this course. We need to come away renewed, refreshed, invigorated, inspired, energized. And so you can only have that when you have the most supportive environment. So that that's the goal, that they leave this four-day course and say, oh my gosh, I want to conduct. I want to do my own pieces in the recording session. I want to do my own pieces in the concert stage. And I have the tools now to develop and I'm coming back next summer. <laughs> that would be the goal. <laughs> Fantastic. So I think there is uh, there is one or two, or I don't know how many, but some some were there last summer. So actually, you completed your goal for last year already, and um, I'm looking much very uh, very much forward for for the upcoming course. Um, yeah, for the upcoming course in July. Thank so, you. Yeah, lovely. So just to, um, I want to incorporate Ross a little bit. Do you have uh, any question? Is anything that you can think of we could add? Well, yeah, it's been great to listen to your discussion. I think it's going to be a very inspiring class for real. Thank you. Uh, I'm just, I think I'm going to ask the same question I did uh, ask in the previous episode, which is, so what can a participant do between now and when the course starts to prepare themselves for this uh, workshop? So uh, I have selected all the repertoire that we're going to be studying this summer, and I've ordered the music and the parts, and they're going to be delivered in the next few days. So the each participant will receive the detailed schedule of the four-day course, um, a detailed uh, outline of the pieces that we're doing and which sections of the pieces, very specifically, you know, measure one through measure whatever. And then it's optional to do the second part, to, to do farther. There'll be option, option one and option two, depending on if you're a more advanced student and you're returning, there's going to be a second option that you maybe want to do because it's more ambitious. They're going to receive, uh, the, like I said, the schedule and the repertoire, and they'll be, they'll be receiving all the scores in PDF form. So I'll send those scores out. Uh, they don't. They can purchase their own copies if they want through publishers, or they can print the PDFs and have them bound. And I would suggest doing that because I'm getting good editions, and they'll they they it will be at no expense for them. Just that they'll have to print it. But I'll be sending all the music out. They can start looking at it. Uh, they can start studying it. I'll send them links, listening links, and I'll tell them you know how how much preparation you need to to do before you come to the course. And it's not an incredible amount of preparation. They should familiarize themselves with the pieces. They should have printed the scores and looked at them. And they should feel comfortable and recognize the pieces. But they don't need to know how to conduct those pieces because they will learn that in the course. So they don't need to feel, oh, my gosh, I don't know how to bring, how do I cut off a fermato? What do I do? We'll teach you that in the course. But you should know the music and feel comfortable and be able to sing or to hum it and 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 know as much as you can about the piece. Uh, and they'll be given listening links. They'll be given PDFs. They should bring a baton if they can. Uh, if they can, if they can't buy a baton, they can also borrow a baton from someone in the class. And I'll also bring a few extras that I'll can lend out. Uh, but they should be, and that should be coming in the next um, two weeks. So they should have most of April, May, and June and into July. So they should have several months to feel comfortable, to feel confident. And again, they don't need to know how to conduct the pieces uh, because they will learn how to do that when they enter the course. So there's no, there should be so no worry or anxiety on the part of the participants of, oh my gosh, how steep is this mountain? What do I have to do before I come to the course? We, I, I've structured it in a way that that doesn't need to happen. 
that that's not going to happen. Sounds great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It sounds wonderful. Um, so Amy, I think we're gonna conclude this uh, slowly. Is there anything else you can think of that you would like to tell uh, about the upcoming course to the participants? Well, I'll just uh, say I'm looking very much forward to uh, the four day course from July 8th to July 11th this summer and beautiful, beautiful Baden, Austria. I welcome all back all the participants from last summer and I extend my hand in welcoming all the new participants and uh, we still have a few spaces left. So if you're considering, please go to the website at hollywoodmusicworkshop.com and look at their, their specific course description about this course. And it, it clearly spells out exactly what we're gonna be learning. And if you're interested, I encourage you to enroll. It's gonna be a wonderful summer. Thank you, Amy. I also want to encourage the participants to enroll. There are some spot left, but not many, I want to say. So if you decide to do this, we're looking very much forward to welcoming you. Thank you, Amy, for that beautiful interview. Thank you, Lilo. Bye-bye.